The Unification of Italy The French Revolution of 1789 CE had unleashed the forces of liberty, equality and fraternity that strengthened people's participation in the political process. Further, the large empire established by Napoleon Bonaparte had only served to fuel revolutionary ideas in the regions that now formed a part of Napoleon's empire. The period after 1815 witness nationalist movements in almost every country in Europe the aim of nationalists differed across countries while in some countries the primary objective was to gain independence in others it was to unify a divided nation italy and germany were two such countries where the struggle for unification was the strongest in this lesson we will learn about the unification of italy some countries in europe were divided into a number of states there was no unity among them similarly italy was divided into many small principalities napoleon's conquest of italy brought the small principalities under a single administrative unit italy became a part of the french empire and imbibed the ideals of the French Revolution. In 1814-1815, following the defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte, a great peace conference was held in Vienna, the capital of Austria. The European statesmen at the Congress of Vienna decided to restore Europe to its former position, that is, before the outbreak of the French Revolution and Napoleon's conquests. The changes made by Napoleon were set aside and the old rulers were restored to their thrones. Italy was once again divided into numerous small states. The richest and strongest Italian state was Sardinia, which included Piedmont. The papal states comprising Rome and Italy belonged to the Pope. Lombardy, Venetia, Modena, Parma, and Tuscany were under Austria. The two major obstacles to Italian unification were Austria would not give up the Italian territories that lay within her empire. The Pope would not give up the Papal States to the Italian nationalists. With the failure of the revolution of 1848, the first attempt to unite Italy failed. Sardinia had tried to lead an all Italian movement against Austria which was easily crushed by Austria. Italy at this time had a number of secret societies that wanted to liberate and unify the country. The Carbonari was one such secret society that aimed at liberating Italy through armed uprisings. The Carbonaris were however suppressed ruthlessly by the Austrian army Giuseppe Mazzini was a member of the Carbonari in 1831 he formed an organization called Young Italy its aim was the independence and unification of Italy and the subsequent establishment of a republic the organization encouraged young men to join and support the cause of Italian unification In 1848, Young Italy organized mass uprisings in many parts of Italy. Due to lack of coordination and organization, these uprisings were suppressed easily by the Austrian army. The King of Sardinia, Victor Emmanuel, was an enlightened and liberal ruler who appointed Count Cavour as his prime minister. After 1848, Count Cavour, the Prime Minister of Sardinia, took up the task of unifying Italy under the leadership of Sardinia. He was a passionate nationalist 
and one of the greatest statesmen Italy had ever produced. He devoted all his energies to strengthen Sardinia and to lead the Italians in their struggle for unity and independence. In 1859, Cavour allied with Napoleon III, the Emperor of France, and went to war with Austria and succeeded. Together, they ousted the Austrians from Lombardy, which was then annexed to Sardinia. Cavour also persuaded Tuscany, Modena, Parma and the Papal States to join Sardinia. A new Italian kingdom was thus formed. Only Venetia, which was still under the Austrians, the kingdom of the two Sicilies, Sicily and Naples, whose rulers refused the unification plan, and Rome, which was under the Pope, remained outside the fold. Garibaldi was instrumental in the liberation of the two Sicilies. He organized a loyal band of a thousand brave patriotic men. Dressed in bright red shirts and led by Garibaldi, the thousand heroes first liberated Sicily and then Naples. By the end of 1860, the two Sicilies had been liberated and united with Sardinia. Later, when Austria was defeated by Prussia, Venetia also joined the Italian Union. When Prussia attacked France in 1870, the last barrier to the unification fell. Rome joined Sardinia and this completed the process of unification. Nationalism had triumphed. In July 1871, Rome became the capital of a unified Italy headed by King Victor Emmanuel II. Let us now recap all the important points that we have covered in this lesson on the unification of Italy.